Hello girls and boys. Today we're going to be going over Survivors in Risk of Rain 2 and ranking them in a tier list. Did I say tier list? I mean lists. Because we're not only focusing on one, we're going to have three for you. Now to keep this short and concise, I'm not going to be going over every single factor that goes into the ranking. That's what character guides are for. Instead, I'll give you a brief overview of the character and why I think they're strong. But I'm going to leave you with something real quick right here at the beginning. When it comes to Risk of Rain 2 survivors, there is only a couple ways that you can actually end up dying. Actually, there's really only one. It's when your HP bar reaches zero. Now there's a couple ways this could happen, but here are the three that I think are the main ones. One, you just couldn't dodge the enemy's attacks. You're too slow, you don't have mobility, and you just got one tapped. Two, you can't kill anything, and so everything is slowly stacking up and overwhelming you. And three, you are just slowly being whittled down by small attacks, aka you don't have any healing. What these things really come down to is mobility, damage, and healing. If you have mobility, damage, and healing, you're probably a good survivor. You're probably going to be the best survivor in the game if you have the most out of all three of those. Now there are other factors as well, okay? There's like, oh shit buttons. <laughs> which is what I like to call certain abilities or items that allow you to get out of situations you normally wouldn't be able to, and other forms of utility that aren't exactly quantifiable. So with that being said, my giant ass preamble there, that's kind of my thinking on most of these survivors. All right, so let's actually get into the tier list. For starters, I'm gonna start out with something that makes it very transparent as to the subjectivity in the video. A lot of people, most people in fact, will probably disagree with the rankings that I put on the list. So here's my tier list of survivors that I have the most fun playing. They are my favorite survivors from the most to least. Obviously, I do think that these survivors at the top of the list are good survivors, but I don't think that the top three are the ultimate best top three survivors in the entire game. I just have the most fun playing them. And for anyone listening to this on audio and not actually looking at the video right now, it goes like this. Engineer, Captain, Bandit, Void Fiend, Railgunner, Multi, Huntress, Mercenary, Acrid, Loader, Artificer, Rex, and Commando dead last. So with that out of the way, hopefully now you can see that if I rank Engineer higher than most survivors on the tier list, you might think that there's a little, a little bit of favoritism going in there. JK, the Engineer is perfect, and if you don't think he's objectively the best survivor in the game, you are wrong and dumb. All right, moving on to the next tier list. This one is my looping tier list. This is my tier list for survivors that I think are the best at looping in the game. And by that, I mean that these can regularly get god runs in the game. There are only going to be three tiers, S, A, and B, because really there's not a reason to have any other tiers. There should be no F tier because obviously you can play whatever survivor you want. No survivor is so bad you shouldn't play them, <coughs> except Commando. So starting out with the S tier. We have Void Fiend. Void Fiend is easily one of the best survivors in the game, and honestly, let's just make a tier for Survivors of the Void DLC. The two new survivors and Survivors of the Void are broken. They are just way better than every other survivor in the game. Void Fiend comes in with built-in healing, has a debuff cleanser, so just a free blast shower for no reason, a nearly infinite range M1 that also auto-aims for you, an alternate form that just makes him better artificer, and you can actively choose which form you want to be in which means there's really no downside to the Void Fiend. Remember at the beginning where I said healing, mobility, and damage? Well, he has all three of those, and he has them in spades. Now for the Railgunner, the Railgunner is pretty good. Has the most damage out of anyone in the game, even Loader. Literally ranged Loader. From stage one, can one-shot most bosses, and even has an alternate special which can execute enemies with the freeze mechanic. Something that only Artificer had before now. So basically, Survivors of the Void DLC is just making Artificer a worse survivor overall. The only real downside to the Railgunner is low mobility, but her mobility is actually pretty decent compared to other survivors. And you can get pretty creative with a lot of the ways to move around as the Railgunner. In fact, Railgunner is one of the most popular survivors for skipping the pillars in Mythrix, just because you can float up with your attack speed. S tier for Survivors of the Void is pay to win. Next, we have the Engineer, my personal favorite survivor in the entire game, and the strongest out of the normal cast. Now, the Engineer might not have mobility or healing built into their kit, but he is a perfect example of someone with utility, aka his turrets. Because they can copy all of his items, he is one of the most efficient characters in the game at using items. Also, all the healing you ever will need is taken care of by just picking up a single Bungus. While mobility is an issue for engineers, you can easily focus picking up as many mobility items as possible and foregoing some damage. 
Your turrets are going to take the aggro off of most enemies, so you're not going to have to worry about everything and their mother trying to kill you. So simply place a turret down and fast walk your way out of there. Moving on to the A tier, we have Captain. I think Captain is my second favorite survivor and also the second most efficient survivor in the game next to Engineer. With his special ability, the Hacking Beacons, he can hack into any chest or Shrine of Chance for a completely free experience. This means no matter how expensive the chest, you can just hack it with one of your two beacons that you're given and you can get it absolutely free, no need to farm. This makes stages a lot quicker, and if you do stages a lot quicker, the enemies are gonna be a lot easier to deal with. Now, regardless of whether or not you believe in the fact that you should hit every stage within five minutes, or you believe you should loot as many items as possible, it doesn't really matter, because if the captain can loot underneath five minutes and get as many items as possible quickie, quickie? Qu quickly, then people from both camps should really appreciate the captain. Also, he does have the best M1 in the game. I'm fairly certain it's the best M1 in the game, if, I, if I'm if i not mistaken, but I'm 99% I'm sure. Also, if you partake in a little bit of nuclear warfare, the captain does have an alternate utility skill, which allows him to place a tactical nuke on the ground. It takes a couple seconds to get there, but it will instantly kill basically anything there. It is the highest damaging ability in the game. The one flaw the captain has, much like the engineer, is that he has no mobility, like literally zero. So you're gonna have to focus on getting as much mobility as possible, or you're gonna become kind of a sitting duck. One final note about the captain and why he's A tier is because he has microbots, a passive, which gives him an item in his inventory, which blocks projectiles coming towards him. You'd be surprised what this counts and what it doesn't. For example, a wisp attack does not count. A greater wisp attack does. Also, that little field that Awu and the solar probe units lay at your feet once they get low enough can be blocked by microbots. So even though you might be slower than molasses, you will probably never get hit by a single projectile. You just have to end up dodging anything that isn't a projectile. Moving on, we have Bandit. Now, the Bandit has a lot of things going for him, but I would say his M1 isn't really that good, his M2 isn't really that good, and his utility is pretty decent. The real power of the Bandit comes from his passive and his special ability. His passive makes it so that every single attack he lands on an enemy that has its back turned towards him is going to critically strike, no matter what. This means that as long as you are behind the enemy, you just essentially get double damage for free. And his special, Desperado, the special that I'm talking about here, allows you to infinitely scale your damage. Every time you kill an enemy with Desperado, it increases its damage by 10%, which after a couple stacks starts to add up to a tremendous amount of damage. So while you're going about looting the stage, all you have to do is use your Desperado, which has a 4 second cooldown on all the Wisp and Beetles running around. And by the time you get to the boss, all you have to do is walk around it, shoot it in the back with Desperado, and it's probably dead. Almost every run that I play, this is what I do on the first and second stage, and those stages are just super easy. And since this is mostly about how you can get as consistent of a god run as possible, I feel like this alone makes him A tier. The one downside with Desperado though, is that it doesn't stack through stages, so the next stage you go to will reset all of your Desperado stacks. Otherwise, he would be the strongest survivor in the game. You might think that this is bad and that it might actually make Desperado a bad special ability, but really all you need Desperado for is the first couple stages so you can get strong enough to eventually not need it anymore. Okay, you follow? Good. Next is Loader, the smaller version of Railgunner. Instead of being able to one-shot everything from afar, you one-shot everything in their face. One of the most tanky survivors in the game, and kind of broken because they have like two passives I think. One is that you can't take fall damage as loader, and two, every time you hit something with your fists, you gain barrier. It doesn't necessarily heal you, but it adds a little bit of a buffer between you and your health bar. I don't think anyone's going to argue with me about loader being A tier. Probably the only thing they're going to argue about is that she should have been higher. Next is Multi, another A tier survivor. Multi is truly an all-around robot. Just as the name implies, there are multiple ways to play Multi, and most of them are pretty strong. I mean, he's got Power Saw. Look at that thing. But truthfully, my lord, his nail gun is the fastest attack in the game. Although it has a lower proc coefficient, it still procs an insane amount. Also, his special skill allows him to swap into a different weapon, so even if nail gun wasn't that good, for example, it's kind of hard to hit things from afar with nail gun, you could just use his special retool and swap to the rebar puncher. Which speaking of, double rebar is an insanely broken build and I used it to get through Eclipse 8 with multi. Not only that, but he also has the highest HP in the game. And the only ranged survivor that starts with armor. 
meaning he also is the tankiest survivor, even tankier than Loader, if we don't count passives. And then of course we have Power Mode, his alternative special, which allows him to use both of his weapons at the same time. Oh, and Retool, the initial special, can also allow you to hold two equipment at once. Did somebody say double eccentric vase? But anyway, all of the things that Multi has, all of his stats, all of his abilities, it feels almost like a crime to put him this low on the list, and it's still A tier. Now, moving on from the list, I feel like there's a pretty large drop in the consistency and the power of the survivors past this point. We're now in the B tier, and I'm going to start with Huntress. Huntress is good, has a lot of damage, has single target and AoE, and has a lot of mobility. Some of the things about the Huntress that aren't really that great include the fact that she's the squishiest survivor of the game. Most of the time, she doesn't have that much vertical mobility other than using her Ballista. Her M1 is actually an auto-aim, which is a pain in the butt sometimes when you're trying to hit a specific enemy, but it just doesn't seem to lock on to what you want. That being said, the Huntress does have agile attacks, which means you can hold down the sprint button and attack at the same time, something very few survivors have. Mercenary being the only other one, I think. All in all, the Huntress is a good survivor, but nothing crazy like every other survivor above her. Next, we have the Mercenary, who isn't as bad as I thought he was. I feel like every time chat makes me pick Mercenary, Twitch TV slash RD Thursday, we get a god run out of it, so the character has to be at least somewhat decent. There's a few problems with the Mercenary that make him not as strong as his counterparts. One, he is the squishiest melee survivor. His starting HP and his scaling HP scale just like he was a rain survivor, and he has no form of healing in his kit, which means that you're going to have to make sure that you dodge all the damage you can until you get a healing item as the Mercenary. Not easy when most of your abilities are melee. Now the good things about the Mercenary are, he does come with iframes, which makes him super strong. All it takes is a certain amount of cooldown reduction with his Eviscerate ability, which is his default special, and you can essentially become invincible. Brainstalks, Light Flux Pauldrons, and Purities are some of the items that can just make the Mercenary broken. Alternatively, you could get Slicing Winds, which is his alternate special, and make him somewhat of a ranged survivor. I don't think the mercenary is as bad as I used to make him sound like, but again, look at the competition he faces. I can't wait to read the comments about, well, you just don't know how to play the mercenary. Eee. He's S here when I play him because I use iframes perfectly and never get hit while also simultaneously killing every enemy I see instantaneously. While you were out having premarital sex, I was studying the blade. Or something like that. Anyway, moving on to the doggo. It feels so bad to put him in B tier, but it's B for bad boy. In theory, on paper, you could win almost every run with Accurate by just dodging all of the enemies and slowly whittling them down with your poison. I think the general rule is it takes 100 seconds for Accurate to kill any enemy as long as he has his poison on them the entire time, which sounds strong, again, on paper, but when you actually play Accurate, you realize that it is going to take close to that 100 second mark. Your abilities don't really do that much damage, and you're stuck in melee range if you ever want to use your M1. He doesn't have iframes like Mercenary, and he doesn't have innate survivability like Loader, so staying in melee range is just not going to happen. Mainly what you do on Accurate is just pepper them with your secondary skill and your special skill whenever they're off cooldown, and then hoping they die eventually. Not the most fun gameplay, but probably decently consistent? B tier for boring. Sorry, Acrid mains. Next up, we have Artificer, which is the survivor I feel the worst about. Not like I hate the Artificer, but as in I feel bad for her. It seems like the two new survivors just took the best parts of the Artificer and stole them. So now it's like, why even play it? But the reason that the Artificer is good is that she has the Ice Wall so she can execute enemies, elite or otherwise. Ion Surge for mobility and staying off the ground and hopefully not dying. Heavy damage on her secondaries and debuffs on her primary. Sadly, the ignition buffs don't really help her that much. I mean, she's better, but she's not better than the other survivors. So, moving on. Rex. Now, the problem with Rex is that he's always moving away from the one-shot protection threshold every time he uses an ability. If you don't know, Rex heals off of most of his abilities except his secondary, and then uses his HP in return for using his secondary and special ability. This means you're rarely ever going to be at a consistent health as Rex. Instead, you're going to feel like you can't die because you're healing so much, but you're also going to be constantly lowering your HP using your abilities. While these abilities do do a lot of damage and you can chunk bosses, especially early on, 
all it takes is one stone titan to just clip you while you're not prepared, and boom, you're dead. Unlike most survivors who would have had one-shot protection at the time. I've had a couple runs as Rex where this has happened. Also, the biggest crime that Rex could commit, every time you use an ability to hurt yourself, Safer Spaces blocks it. Which means you'll never have your Safer Spaces available when you need it most. And you're still probably going to be taking a lot of damage because you're going to be spamming your secondary skill more than your Safer Spaces can keep up. Very sad. And finally, the last person on our tier list, and the last thing in B tier, Commando. Now, I don't judge you if you play Commando. I'm just saying that I'm judging you. Remember that statement at the beginning where I was like, you don't do enough damage, and therefore you're getting overwhelmed by enemies? That exact statement was made because of Commando players. Commando has both mobility and damage. Too bad he does so little at both, it almost doesn't matter. I know a lot of people say that Commando gets really strong the later it goes in the run because his M1 is really good scaling and his suppressive fire is really good scaling. Well, how are you ever gonna get to the late game if you can't survive the early game? I think Commando is easily the weakest survivor in the game. There's nothing really to note about him. He's just the most vanilla character with the most vanilla kit. Doesn't do anything well, just kinds of does it. But also, this could be a little bit of my own bias coming in as he is my least favorite survivor as well. Not surprising he made it here on the tier list. All right, now I spent all that time talking about the first tier list and that set up for the second tier list, or I guess the third. I won't need to explain every single character as I already explained them in the previous tier list, but here is my Risk of Rain 2 Eclipse Survivor tier list. In the S tier, we have Railgunner above Void Fiend, then Loader, then Bandit, then Artificer. In the A tier, we have Multi, then we have Huntress, then we have Acrid. In the B tier, we have Captain, Engineer, Mercenary, Commando, and then Rex. Now, I'm not a master of Eclipse, so this could be somewhat wrong. I'm sure some people would disagree with some of the placements I have here. This is just what I feel off of my personal opinion and watching other people play. Also, this is more on the fact that in Eclipse, you're going to be going to Mythrix instead of trying to loop as many times as you can. So you'll be headed to Mythrix before you have just a god run going on. Railgunner has an Execute for Mythrix with her Cryo Charge, which makes her super good. Probably the best survivor to face Mythrix against. It's almost free, and you could probably do it with no items, honestly. The Void Fiend just has Inherent Healing and does a bunch of damage with both forms. Loader, again, super strong. Doesn't take fall damage, so gets rid of that Eclipse modifier. And can beat the game extremely fast. Bandit has good mobility, super efficient because you can just crit from the back, and has Desperado, which means you could stack damage. Artificer, much like the Railgunner, has an Execute for Mythrix, and can use Ion Surge to skip the pillars. Multi's just a super strong character, so I think he belongs in A tier. Huntress has enough mobility and damage to get through most Eclipse levels. Acrid is also pretty good for Eclipse. I think most people think that Acrid's really good on Eclipse. His poison's super strong. Again, all it takes is 100 seconds so you can kill anything. He has mobility, can avoid fall damage so he doesn't die from the Eclipse modifier, and has healing built in. Now we move on to the B tier. Most of these survivors have something wrong with them, which makes it very difficult to do Eclipse, but still possible. Captain, Engineer both have no mobility. The Captain can skip pillars with his nuke, which is pretty nifty. The Engineer almost cannot beat Mythrix without at least some mobility, so a Hopu Feather or several stacks of movement speed items. The Mercenary has mobility, iframes, and some damage built in, so Mythrix shouldn't be that difficult, but you are a melee survivor, and you're very, very squishy. Commando, all the reasons that he was bad at looping, he's also bad here. Commando is weakest in the early game, so it's not that great on Eclipse. Also has nothing in their kit that makes them inherently good at Eclipse. And finally, we have Rex, which is almost F tier on Eclipse. If you wanted to have fun in Eclipse, you probably would not play Rex. Most of the Eclipse modifiers make it just a pain to play this guy. Eclipse 8, the permanent damage, all the damage you do to yourself with your abilities are going to hurt you and count against this modifier. Also, your utility is terrible, so you're not going to have any mobility. Your healing is reduced, which means your M1 is going to be way less effective. And if I could really summarize it as quickly as possible, everything about Eclipse makes Rex a worse survivor. The one survivor on the tier list I would say with utter certainty belongs where they are placed. And that's it. That is my Risk of Rain 2 survivor tier list for Survivors of the Void. Go check out my Twitch if you want to watch me live, twitch.tv slash rnd Thursday. And let me know what you think about the list. Let me know what you disagree with, what you actually do agree with, and uh, you know, what not. If you leave a comment like, you're wrong, period, and that's it, you're stupid. I hate you. Never comment on anything again. Anyway, this is Swag Money 69 signing out.